All right, I bring you greetings from our pastor, Pastor Shala Shumakinde, who is not here this evening. Um, well, physically, in that version. But Pastor Abigail is here, so Pastor Shala is here in this version. Praise God. So I bring you greetings from them, and I sincerely want to appreciate them for the opportunity to share God's word with you. This evening, I come very pregnant, especially after a wonderful carol service. Now, how many people were at the carol service? Okay, no, no. no. How many people missed the carol service physically? Not if you've gone, you missed it. Okay, if you are sitting beside somebody who was at the carol service, can you turn to them and say, ah, you missed. Oh. <laughs> you missed. Right, but you can watch it on YouTube, amen. It was fantastic. Choir, can we just put our hands together for the choir one more time? <laughs> Wonderful. And the drama department. And you know, there are certain departments that worked behind the scenes, right? The ushering department, the protocol department, the audio department, the media department. I mean, the children's department. You could see the children's teachers try to get the children all settled down, you know. Wow, wow. Thank you so much. And I know I'm communicating pastor's heart to you. God bless you. God increase you. And you will not go unrewarded in the precious name of Jesus. And of course, the prayer department, right? Yeah, yeah, the prayer department and every other department. God bless you. Thank you so much for giving to the Lord. Well, this evening, um, I come to share a very brief word with us. And I think it's in the spirit of the season. Now, exactly one week from now, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Um, we all know that Jesus did not physically come on the 25th of December. So I know some when 25th of December is approaching, some unserious fellows will go on Facebook, uh, yeah, 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 they just want to talk. The truth is, yes, we all know <laughs> that Jesus did not come physically on the 25th of December. But we have chosen that day to celebrate his birth. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So that's exactly what will be happening one week from now. And I know that we have a service here, just one hour, and it's going to be explosive, right? In a very positive way. Praise God. Um, and since we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, I want to pick my text from the book of Luke, chapter 1. So let's look at Luke, chapter 1. Um, we're going to be reading from the... Luke chapter 1. We're going to be reading from the, let me start from the 26th verse, all right, for the sake of context. 26. I'm going to be talking about what I have titled the realm of possibilities, all right? The realm of possibilities. Verse 26 of the book of Luke, chapter 1. The Bible says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. <laughs> of the household of David. All right. And the virgin's name was Mary. So if you saw the drama, this was what was acted. Verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou at highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father. David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34, then said Mary unto the angel, I like this question, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man, somebody shout process. Verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin, or cousin rather, she had conceived the son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Verse 37. For with God nothing 
shall be impossible. Verse 38, And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now I want to read the 37th verse to us in the Amplified Version. The 37th verse in the Amplified Version says, For with God nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. You see, Christianity is a culture of possibilities. When we gave our lives to Christ, what actually happened to us was that we were introduced into a kingdom of possibilities. I mean, think about it. The angel came to Mary and said, you, a virgin. I, I, you know, I usually say this, and I, I say it because it is the truth. There are no meaningless details in the Bible. Everything that the Holy Spirit inspired the writers of every portion of the Bible to pen down are actually in the Bible deliberately and very intentionally. Now, when God was inspiring, the Holy Spirit inspiring the writer of the book of Luke, who was Dr. Luke, to write down the things he wrote down, he was careful to mention that Mary was a virgin. And when we say someone is a virgin, that means she's known not a man before, right? Simply, that's what it means. So the angel came to her and said, you're highly favored, all the interesting greetings, Mary was shocked for so many reasons. Um, number one, why me? There are lots of other women out there. Why me? Um, Bible history tells us that at the time the angel came to Mary, Nazareth was a very small, I mean, they called it a city, but Nazareth was actually made up of 11 houses and one street. So you can imagine how small it was. So, this angel bypassed Jerusalem, bypassed all the Judea, all the massive cities, and came to this small city, 11 houses, one street, to one of the houses in this street, and came to a virgin. Now, this angel should have gone to a married woman. <laughs> but the angel came to a virgin. I like God. He tries to complicate the issues because <laughs> he understands that there are no impossibilities where he's concerned. So he comes to a virgin and tells this virgin, you shall give birth to a son. And that son shall be the, the deliverer of the world, to put it in a very short form. And Mary looked at the angel and asked a question that I would have expected her to ask. How shall this thing be, seeing I know not a man? Because there is a process. The process of getting pregnant is that you have intercourse with a man. That is the process. But God was telling her through this angel that I am going to bypass the process and you would be pregnant. And she could not understand it logically because you must understand that you are either living life based on logic or living life based on revelation. So logically, this does not make sense. There is a process. You are saying that I would bypass the process and be pregnant and have the result of the process but not go through the process. And the angel said, well, maybe I should remind you. I'm sure you're not aware. There is no GSM, nothing. So you could not have called your cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth that was called barren. She now has, she's pregnant, six months. <laughs> he says, so your own case would not be different. He says, the power of the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and all of those things would happen. And the angel looks at her and says that, may I remind you of who sent me? The person who sent me, this person recognizes no impossibilities. Because for with this person that I am talking to you from, there are absolutely nothing. Or there are no impossibilities. Nothing is impossible with this person. I am sure this was the same thing that is being echoed in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 27, I think. 27, yes. Mark 10, 27. 
It says that with men, these things can be impossible. So there are certain things that can be impossible with men, but not with God. He says, for with God, what things are possible? All things are possible. All things are possible. I, I want you to think about that for a moment. With God, all things are possible. Meaning there are no limitations in God. With God, all things are possible. 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 The birth of Jesus in itself is an impossible situation becoming possible. So why do you think that when we get into the Christian faith that we would not need to walk in impossibilities impossi rather to show that we belong to a different faith? The Christian faith is a realm of possibilities. Getting born again and becoming a child of God is getting to be part of a family where nothing is impossible. Absolutely everything is possible. It is in this family that we see the Red Sea path. And I must get, let you understand that all the stories you read in the Bible can still happen today. <laughs> they can still happen today. Because they are still happening in different forms today. It is being brought into a kingdom of possibilities. I want somebody to shout possibilities. Being brought into a kingdom of possibilities. Possibilities. And you see, what happens in this kingdom is that in God, processes can be collapsed for your sake. I, I want you to understand that. Because there are two kinds of progress in life. There is the step-by-step -step progress. Everybody has access to that. But there is such a thing called a quantum leap. Do you understand what I'm saying? In Amos chapter 9, verse 13, Amos 9, Amos 9, 13, I want you to project that verse, Amos 9, 13. I want to show you something. The prophet was speaking prophetically and says, Behold, the day is come that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Do you, do you understand what that means? The plowman, somebody who is still trying to make way in the soil for his seed. He says that person shall overtake the person who is already in their so-called harvest season. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes shall overtake the person sowing seeds. Meaning the person who, you know, typically what, what happens is you want to sow seeds for grapes. What would happen is the first thing after you tread, that means this person has harvested, treaded, and done all of that. Then you get the seed. Then you go and plant the seed. Then you get the reward. He's saying that the person who is still in the treading season will overtake the person who has already started sowing seed. He's saying that we're in a kingdom that the plowman has the opportunity to overtake the reaper. Now, you see, what I am saying is that in this kingdom, overtaking is permitted. If everything you expect to happen to you in life has to be step by step, then you do not understand the kingdom you've come into. Because the kingdom you've come into is a kingdom where quantum leaps are possible. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Quantum leaps are possible. See, you can get into an office today and become the most relevant staff in the office in one year. And one year is actually too much, but at least one year. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me share a testimony with you. I was sharing with the leaders a while ago, on Sunday. You see, where I currently work, um, I got into the organization in January, and it's a, very, it's a big firm, a big, big consultant firm. And um, we have lots of people there, experienced and all of that. And when I was getting in, God gave me a word. And I held on to that word. Well, amazingly, at the end of the year, and this was just on Sunday, myself and my wife went there. And we were having our awards night, or they called it. And there was an award they called the Superstar Award. <laughs> the superstar meaning the most um, relevant staff for the year. And they called my name. Now, when I got up to receive the award, to be sincere, was I surprised? I was not really surprised. 
Because I know what God had told me. He had mentioned to me at the beginning of the year that my sufficiency is of you. So the results that I was churning out during the course of the year were beyond me. I had a fantastic team and I blessed God for that team. But the truth is that I understood something deeper. That I must not rise arithmetically. I can enter into an organization and rise geometrically. And you see, you must understand that the kingdom we've come into is a kingdom where processes can be bypassed. You see, when God says seed time and harvest, you must understand that there is also something called fast tracking the time. <laughs> so you can sow today and reap today. Well, there are people that have done it. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 26, we read a very interesting story. Genesis 26. So verse 1 starts telling us that there was famine in the land. And Isaac wanted to do what his father did when there was also famine. Now, if you read Genesis chapter 12, the Bible tells us that there was famine in the land. And the next thing that Abraham did was that he packed his load and he went to Egypt. All right? Then you read Genesis 13, verse 2. And the Bible says, and Abraham was very rich in cattle. He got out of Egypt a very rich man. So there was also famine in the land. And Isaac said, ah, this looks like what daddy described. Happened to him many years ago. So what did daddy do? <laughs> Experience. <laughs> what did daddy do when there was famine? He went to Egypt. So Isaac was about to pack his load and go to Egypt. And God came to him and said, you don't need to go to Egypt. Just stay where you are. I will show you that I'm a God of possibilities. Stay where you are and sow in this land. And the Bible tells us something remarkable. Remarkable. And that is verses 12. Genesis 26 verse 12. Genesis 26, verse 12. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed. He stayed in Gerah, right? He says, and Isaac sowed in that land. I want you to read this. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year. Somebody shout the same year. He received in the same year. What? An hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Verse 12, 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Verse 14. And for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines, the country, envied one man. One year. He took this guy one year to gain national prominence. One year. <laughs> Do you know what it means to sow and reap a hundredfold? Remember where I started from. There are no meaningless details in the Bible. Now, when he says that he reaped a hundredfold, it means that there was no single seed that failed to produce a hundredfold. You know a hundredfold is superior to a hundred percent. Do you know that? Yes, Do you know that? If he had said he sold and he got a hundred percent of his results, we would have said, wow, that's huge. But when he says he sold and he got a hundredfold, that means every single seed produced a hundred percent. Everything, each seed. There was, you see, 99.9% .9 would have been something. But the hundredfold, this is the God that we serve. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? This is the God that we serve. He's the God of possibilities. In one year, this guy wanted to run away because there was famine in the land. But you see, the world was sinking. But one man was rising. The Bible says he grew, became great. He went forward. He until he became very great. And until the whole nation started to envy one man. You read the story for that. They said, guy, you are too great for us. Please, you can go. <laughs> one man. The whole nation began to envy one man. Possibilities. Somebody shout possibilities. possibilities. Say possibilities one more time. You see, we live in a kingdom where anything is possible. Now, pastor used to say that if you wait till you are older, you want to go through the normal progression, do you know how long it will take for you to catch up with certain people in this world? But do you know that there is a provision in God? The same way there is a provision for health, there is a provision for preservation. There is a provision for God. That provision is in God is a provision of possibilities. It's a provision of being experiencing what he calls a fast track. You know, in project management, there is something they call fast tracking for the engineers that are here. So, for example, it will take us five days to build this house. 
but we can fast track building this house and possibly, possibly, I'm just saying possibly, you know, make it happen in a shorter period, maybe two days or one day, all right? Of course, cement will have to cast and all of that. But you know in God it is possible. But I'm talking naturally now. So what you do is that you increase the resources, right? God can increase the resources of angels on your path in destiny. That what would have taken you five years to accomplish, you accomplish it in one day. It is extremely possible because it has happened before. I have seen people that it has happened for. It has happened for me in some dimensions in my life. We serve a God of possibilities. You see, the same way there's a provision for wealth, health, preservation, sin, and all of those things, there is a provision for fast track, to experience a fast track and progress in your life. Now, I want, us to, I want to show us something. Matthew chapter 14. Now, even though there is a, such a provision in God, why is it that most believers do not walk in it? Why is it that most believers do not experience it? And I'll show you very quickly from God's word. Matthew chapter 14. Because the word of God interprets the word of God. Is that okay? Now Matthew 14 from verses 22. The Bible talking about Jesus says, And straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. He prayed. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. So the disciples were in a ship, and the ship was being tossed to and fro with the wave. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, now, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried for fear. Verse 27, but straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, I like Peter, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Ah, I like Peter. Now, the disciples saw Jesus walking on water. And you know, <laughs> that is defying all manner of laws. Walking on water. And that is great. And I know people have read that and said, well, that was Jesus, you know. And we talk about this verse as though it was only Jesus who walked on water. But well, let's read on. <laughs> Peter said, tell me to come. And he, that's Jesus, said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, what happened to Peter, please? He walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Jesus was not the only one who walked on water. Peter also walked on water. Now verse 30. <laughs> but when he saw, that's talking about Peter now, saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore thou did thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, what can you read the next, the last three words? What happened? So the wind came to distract this guy. Because immediately they got into the ship, the wind ceased. Because the, the reason the wind came was to distract this guy who was walking on water and defying gravity. So is there a possibility that this guy could have been walking on the water and regardless of what was happening around, he would still keep walking on the water? Yes. Because remember, when we started reading the story, it starts with the fact that there was already this boisterous wind. But Jesus was walking on the water regardless of what was happening around. He was walking on water. And then Peter said, okay, God, Jesus, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. And he got out of the ship and started to walk on water too. Then he looked at the wind and he considered what was happening around and started to sing. And he said, save me, save me. And Jesus saved him first before he told him something and said, Oh, thou of little faith. Why did thou doubt? You should not have doubted. You should have just kept walking. 
Now, what was Jesus trying to say? Very simple. When he told Peter to walk on water, he was telling Peter something. He said, come. Meaning, hey, amongst the guys in that ship, it seems you have a possibility mindset. You have a mindset that is different from them. But come. And as Peter started to walk on the water, because of what was happening around, Peter's mindset, mindset shifted. And he started to consider what could happen to him. In the presence of Jesus. <laughs> you can be coming to church. You can be sleeping in church. And in the presence of Jesus, you can be praying every day. And if you have a mindset of defeat, you have a mindset of impossibilities, that is what you'll be experiencing in your life. Even though you are with Jesus and Jesus is right there, what will be happening is Jesus will be saving you. <laughs> He'll be saving you. But you see, the truth is that what Jesus wants you to do is to walk by faith, is to have a possibility mindset and walk on water rather than allow the circumstances to make you adopt an impossibility mindset. So you begin to understand why in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, and this, if you have a Bible like mine, these words are in red. Meaning Jesus said it, no mincing of words. He says, if thou believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things. He didn't say some things. Is that what he said? Some things? Okay, almost everything. He says all things. What does all mean? All means all. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things. So, would I be right to say that the reason why we are not walking in the possibilities that Jesus has provided for in our lives is simply because we are not believing. And what, does, what, do, does, what, what, do, what do we mean by believe? Let me just put it very simply in this context. Believe means to adopt a possibility mindset. To believe that whatever God has said can happen and will happen in your life. Amen. And you walk in that reality. Regardless of what is happening around. You walk in that reality. Remember, what was the premise upon which Peter walked on the water? The word of Jesus, come. Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out on that word. And started to walk on that word. Come. Come. Because when God speaks, he speaks his potential. When God speaks, he speaks his ability. The word of God contains all the ability of God. When God speaks, he speaks possibilities. Remember in the book of Judges chapter 6, very interesting portion of the Bible. <laughs> you walk up to... God sent an angel to this guy called Gideon. And Gideon was hiding from the Midianites. And the angel came to Gideon and looked at him and said, Thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, Who is the mighty man of valor? Number one, aside from the fact that I am the smallest in my father's house and my father's house is the smallest in my tribe, my tribe is the smallest, and all of that story, I am hiding. I do not look like a man who is a mighty man of valor. I am hiding. From the enemy. And the angel said, no, no, no. You are a mighty man of valor. Because when God speaks to you, God does not speak your predicament. He speaks your potential. He looked at him and said, you are a mighty man of valor. He said, go in this your might and save Israel. And Gideon rode on the power of those words. And did he save Israel or not? Yes, he did. Because when God speaks, he speaks his potential. When God speaks, he speaks his ability. When God speaks, he speaks his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when God's word comes to you, that word can make you what he talks about. I'm telling you, regardless, regardless, regardless of what the circumstance or the situation around is, God's word has the ability to make you what he talks about. Because you must understand that God's word carries with it the ability of God. God is back of his word. Hallelujah. You see, 
And the interesting thing about God's word is that it does not recognize obstacles. God's word does not recognize limitations. God's word does not recognize impossibilities. So God looks at the situation that looks dead, and he speaks about that situation as though there were already life in it, because that is what he's saying. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's word is full of power. God's word is full of power. There is nothing that is impossible with God. And we tap into that realm of possibilities as we believe God's word. You see, some, some weeks ago, some weeks ago, I, I, <laughs> I've seen this happen in different areas of my life. I'm telling you, different areas of my life. Some weeks ago, I, I, I got enrolled for this very interesting and very difficult and very complex. <laughs> I don't know who sent me. All right, <laughs> very complex course. It was a certification course, right? And when I, it was after I enrolled, they told us that you're going to write two exams in one week. And, well, the nature of my job, you know, I have different jobs, right? I have my job in church. I have my, <laughs> I have my job at home. <laughs> my job. So the nature of my job in my secular office, right? very demanding. So they told us we we're going to write this exam too in, in one week. And you see, I could not afford to fail. Because from the beginning, I'd already started telling the lecturer, I said, I'm going to get the best score here and all of that. And the lecturer said, hey, okay, let's see. <laughs> said, people have failed this course. So I said, no, I can't fail. So we wrote the exams, right? The first one Wednesday passed. The last one on Friday. Got into the exam hall. And it was like Hebrew Greek. I thought I knew Hebrew Greek until I got to the exam. <laughs> you know, the questions were very, you know, how they say in Yoruba, very bala bala. <laughs> you know, I was reading the questions. I said, ah, okay. So I said, you know what? Objectives, you know, these very interesting objective questions, right? So I would, I said, let me answer all the ones I know. Then when I get to the end, I'll come back and start with the ones I did not know. Now, there were about 68 questions or so. By the time I finished, right, I looked at it and I discovered I only knew about it. I had ticked 18. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, okay, Joshua, yeah, this, now this, this. But I remembered something. And that's what pastor used to talk about. I remembered something. That in the course of the year, there was a project that was brought to us in the office. And everybody was running away from the project because the project was, the client was going to pay a lot of money. And I mean a lot of money. And that project, was, the success of that project was going to be dependent, or not, not necessarily, the success of another project rather, was going to be dependent on the success of this project. So if this project fails, the clients will not be able to execute the second project. And these two projects were global projects. So it fails in Nigeria, they were here in New York that it failed. <laughs> so they would ask. So as a matter of fact, the reason why the client was looking for a consultant to come and handle it is so that if when it fails, they will say, oh yeah, oh, they are the ones that made it fail, not, not us, right? And everybody in the office said, ah, no, this one, no, this one, mm -mm -mm. And they brought the project to me and said, Joshua, would you be interested in managing this project? And I looked at it, I said, ha. Ah. I said, have you done anything like this before? No. So what are you going to do? I said, I would handle it. He said, ah. The global head of this company, and if, when, if I mention the name of the company, I mean everybody here would know it. The global head would know if anything happens to this project. I said, yeah, it's okay. I said, okay. So, start. And I managed it. And honestly, I managed it by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because at every point in time, all I was asking every day was, Spirit of God, just teach me what to do. I remember the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. 
He says, our sufficiencies of God. I like the way the Amplified puts it. He says, our ability, our power is from God. That means when you see me, what I can do is what God can do. Right? It is not about me. It's about the person behind me who gives me all the ability. So I began to develop templates, develop reports, develop things that they would send to the global office and they would see in the global office, wow, let's adopt this globally. <laughs> I would develop the wow, let's adopt this globally. Bottom line, and you see, the other part of it was that that project, if it failed, one of the ways they would know is that they would, the company would be sued by different stakeholders. Now, and everywhere people have executed that project, people get sued. It is now, so the question is now, how can you minimize how many people will sue you? So that was the question. That was going to be success. So when we were discussing in the office, we said, okay, let's just minimize <laughs> those. They will sue. But how many people will sue? I am telling you, I, I, I spoke to God, my wife, we agreed. And we said, you know what? There will be zero litigation. At the end of the project, there was zero litigation. The global office sent and said, wow, this, we've never seen it like this before. You guys have a lot of experience. And I laughed. I said, the ancient of days has all the experience, <laughs> right? Because my sufficiency is not of me. It's of God. Now, I remember that. And so I sat in that hall and I said, Joshua, this one you've passed. And I wrote the exam. I, I wrote, sat down, and I left. And when I left, the lecturer saw me and said, so how did it go? I said, I have not only passed, but I would have the highest score, and I would have a trainer score. And he said, eh. <laughs> people are praying to pass. You are talking about trainer score. I said, yes. I said, I would have a trainer score. So when the results came out, what happened? Guess what happened? Exactly what happened. I mean, I passed, got a trainer score. That's what happened. Right? That's what happened. Well, you know, all of this happened because I saw a God of possibilities, and I depended on him. It is a mindset. Now, I share this word with you because as we go into 2020 chronologically, because as a ministry, we're ready in 2020, so you can start experiencing these things now. But as we go into 2020 chronologically, there are lots of things God is going to say to you. Lots of things. And some of, some of you, God has already started to speak to you. But I want you to understand that when God speaks, that those words carry the ability for the words to come to pass. God is back of those words. So all you need to do is to jump out and step out in faith. Walk on water. Don't allow the storms and everything you see around to distract you. Understand that when God has said it, if God has told you you'll be a billionaire by before the end of 2020, it is possible. I'm telling you it is possible. Just step out in faith and let him lead and guide you. And you'll be amazed at what you'll make out of your life. Because with God, there is the room to experience a fast track. Things do not have to go step by step for you. I'm not going to be shocked because that is what we'll see. That at the end of 2020, this church will be five times the size. I'm not going to be surprised because that is what, when we declare those things as the host of heaven that cannot be numbered, what are we doing? We are sending angels and telling them, fast track this word. Because God gave us the word in the first place. You see, as we speak, as we pray this season, I want you to look at 2020 prophetically and see possibilities. See possibilities. Don't think linearly. Don't think step by step. Begin to think quantum leap. As you look at 2020, think quantum leap. Don't expect your life to experience some progression little by little. As you look at 2020, whatever it is, the same faith it takes, and I mean this, the same faith it takes to receive money for that rent is the same faith it takes for God to give you that house. I'm telling you the truth. You can start to see it and start to act that way. Line up with God's thoughts. Line up with God's word and you'll experience God's word in your life. Can we stand up and rise up on our feet this evening? Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You know, we never like to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Coming into Christ is beyond joining a church, is beyond a religion, 
it is joining God's family. And that is done when you believe in Christ Jesus. So I just want to lead you right away now. If you, are, if you want to give your heart to Christ, just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again and that you paid for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And from today, I belong to you. If you have said those words, we'll be late. You are born again. You are part of God's family right now. You can go ahead and rejoice about it. And if you want to contact us, just check. The address is written on the screen. God bless you. We love you. Stay blessed.